All right, world history students. Um, this is the second part of World War II on the Eastern Front. Uh, yesterday, we, or yesterday, that's when I filmed it, but you know, in the last one, we went up until uh, the Battle of Stalingrad when the Germans uh, had to surrender uh, a huge number, uh, something like 600,000 troops um, to uh, the Soviets. And uh, we said that from that point on, they were going to be uh, in retreat. Um, that doesn't mean that everywhere they were moving back at the same rate or anything like that. So there are a couple of uh, things in there that are worth noting. So um, the first thing is that we, we talked about Army Group Center that went towards Moscow and how they were defeated. And then Army Group South that going towards the oil fields and then they got diverted to Stalingrad and how they were defeated. Um, that leaves us with the Army Group North, German Army Group North that was headed towards Leningrad, um, what used to be St. Petersburg, an important, a very important city in, in the Soviet Union. And they really decided they were going to put a siege, surround it, uh, surround the city of Leningrad and starve it out. Well, they definitely starved it out. Um, over a million people died, uh, most of them of starvation in that siege. But that siege went from, I like to check my date, so September of 1941 until January of 1944, when the Soviets were finally able to push out the, the German army surrounding it. So, um, you know, all of 1942 and 1943, and then a, another chunk of the other years. So uh, a, 900 days, essentially, is about 900 days of siege. So imagine that long without having really much access to food, um, and, you know, there was occasional, there was shelling and bombing and things like that. So it was just a, a horrible, horrible situation in those bitter, cold Russian winters. There was almost no heat. Um, families were forced to burn their own furniture to get some heat, uh, both for uh, maybe cooking and for just heating their homes. And uh, that didn't last long. It was uh, just a, a horrible time. Another uh, thing, so is... It, the Germans start to get pushed back. Uh, they are fighting bitterly, right? So most people, most Germans, uh, the soldiers and the people at home don't realize uh, that it's lost. It takes a while before that finally uh, hits home to them. But um, and the, the German army fought well in battles, but they were just not, uh, they didn't have the numbers didn't have the supplies needed to really be able to win at that point. Um, so that brings us to another one, the biggest tank battle in world history, the Battle of Kursk, which is going to happen in, uh, let's see, where did, um, July and August of 1943. you got to check those dates because I don't want to you know, get them out of line there. Um, so you have this massive tank battle, um, and the Soviets are able to win. So the Germans always pride themselves on having the, the best tanks, the Panzers and everything, the Tiger tank, all these. Um, and the reality is those were very good tanks, except they didn't have enough of them. They had smaller tanks in this. Uh, they were they were very slow to build because they had you know such thick armor. They were also uh, very slow to move because they were so heavy and they burned fuel like nothing because... Uh, because of the same reasons, they were so heavy. Um, they were very good in combat, but you, they just couldn't provide the numbers that they needed. So they wind up losing that battle as well, the Germans do. Um, so really, that's going to, after that, the, German, the Germans are moving back in retreat in different places at different times. Um, another thing worth noting, in August of 1944, you have the Warsaw Uprising. So that tells you by that point, you know, by August of 1944, the Soviets are moving through Poland and right towards Germany. Um, what actually happened, and this is a, a, another good example of Stalin being a lousy guy. Um, by this point, Stalin is confident that they're going to the war. He's in the war. He says, and um, he is planning, his plan is basically, look, the Americans are in the West. They're not going to be able to get this far. I'm going to basically take over. After the war, a lot of these places are going to become 
the part of the Soviet Union or nations that depend on the Soviet Union. And that's his plan for Poland. Poland will depend on the Soviet Union. And he wants to have a, a communist government in place. So a lot of the people in Poland who have been fighting uh, as resistance fighters against the uh, Germans are very excited and they're going to, they want to help. And so as the Russian army moves just outside of Warsaw, um, the, what they called the Poland, um, causing some pretty, uh, pretty significant German casualties. And they're thinking, you know, we can fight them and hold them off. And then as the Russians come in there, it'll be easy to just defeat Germans here because, uh, you know, we'll be fighting from the inside and here come the Russians and we'll just crush them in between us. But Stalin does not want the home army to win because so many of them are not communists. They're nationalists. They're people I'm for Poland, but I don't like communism. So he just has his army sit and wait while the Germans are able to defeat the home army. And they do. They slaughter the home army. So he just sits there and waits until the home army is destroyed. And then the Soviets move in. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's Hitler for you. Uh, heck of a guy. Uh, well, Stalin, I meant, but you know, Stalin, Hitler, they're both jerks. They're both awful people. So, um, so that's really, we're going to, that's what's happening. And we'll, we'll touch on the battle of Berlin, that last, uh, victory there. But now I'm going to shift gears a little bit to what was the United States doing in Europe? So we'll be looking at Japan at the war against Japan, um, next time, but right now, what was the United States doing? Um, well, here it happened. As you know, Pearl Harbor, December 7, 1941. And then um, Hitler, a few days later, declares war on the United States. And so we immediately start sending supplies to our allies, to the Soviet Union, who's, now, who's on our side because they're, you know, they're fighting the, the Germans, and to uh, England. And so we're sending as many supplies as we can. We also start immediately building up our military just as big as we can. Um, we have, just like in World War II, we have lots of people who go to volunteer. For most Americans, it's worth noting, for most Americans, the enemy was Japan because, you know, they're the ones who bombed Pearl Harbor, et cetera. So most guys are like, ah, oh, let's go fight Japan. Um, that doesn't mean people didn't want to fight Germany, especially once Hitler declares war. You know, the last being, oh, let's, get, let's, let's go. Um, uh, Roosevelt met with uh, Churchill, and they were in touch with Stalin as well, and they decided on uh, Germany first. Like we need to defeat Germany first um, because, you know, Britain really needs the help, uh, et cetera. There's a lot of different reasons. But um, so we're building up our army, and we decide, well, the first we, we can't just do D-Day. Right, you can't just go in there. We have, our army needs some training and experience, and and we're not ready for that. The Germans have been fighting for several years now, and we we have not. Once again, after World War II, shrunk our military. Now, now, now we're building it up, and most of the people in it don't have any experience, so they need to be trained. And so, the first big operation that we're going to do in the European theater is not actually in Europe. It's called Operation Torch, and we're going to invade North Africa. Um, so, what's happening is this. Um, I'll just do it quickly. It's a little confusing. North Africa, Algeria was a colony of France before the war, and now it is a colony of the Vichy regime, uh, which is a puppet of the Germans, right? But it's a French government. Um, and um, the Germans are in there and over towards Libya. They're pushing towards Egypt because they want to control the oil fields there. The um, British are able to hold them off. We come in with Operation Torch now, and we figured this is a good spot because it wasn't clear how hard the French were going to fight against us because they have a, a mixed view. Some of them are saying, well, French, I have to be loyal to the Vichy government because that is, you know, French. And others are like, you know, hey, I'm French. I'm against the Nazis. So there's this real, it's unclear. So uh, what I, we with Operation Torch, when we move in there, uh, it's successful, but it's tricky because in some places, French troops fight very hard to stop the, the Americans. And in other places, they really don't, right? They, they, they are kind of like, come on in, man. We're happy to see you. Um, but Operation Tour uh, gives us some good experience. Um, it's successful. We, we do well in some areas, in other areas, not so great. Um, but this is where we get some of our people like um, Patton, who's going to come in there and um, do some pretty good fighting. 
Uh, and then our next big thing is we're going to move in uh, July of 1943, so next summer, we're going to invade Sicily and then on up into Italy, and we'll start moving up towards Italy. Um, and the Italian people, uh, you know, there's some fighting, and as we get closer, uh, a lot of them rise up because a lot of them weren't happy with Mussolini, their fascist leader, and um, they declare Rome an open city. Uh, but the fighting is pretty brutal going up there. It is tough. Uh, to do because uh, especially when we get uh, north there because you have to go up these mountain ranges, the Apennine Mountains. Um, so there's some fighting there, but we are successful in Italy. Stalin, though, keeps saying, look, there's not enough fighting there. Uh, they, there are more than 10 times as many Germans fighting the Russians as there are fighting the Americans. Um, actually, it's more than that. It's more than 10. Um, I think that there were... At their biggest, they had something like six or seven divisions against us, and they had 90 divisions against the Russians or something like that. I, I'll have to double check my numbers, but many more people. So Stalin keeps saying, you need to fight more. You know, you need to get in there and really be attacking the Germans because you were really, you know, you're fighting kind of the French in Operation Torch, and you're kind of fighting mostly Italians. Some Ger Germans did come in there. Oops, I was not my computer. Over. Germans did come in, but it was mostly Italians. You, know, you need to be fighting the Germans. And so that brings us to the next summer. Uh, June of 1944, where you get D-Day, so June 6th. Um, D-Day doesn't stand for anything. It's just code. Um, they weren't sure exactly what day it was going to be because of the war. So Eisenhower is sitting there and he's just waiting. You know, we have to. There are only certain times of the of the month when the tides were right for this invasion. And so um, he was deciding, finally deciding, you know, June 6th is it. We're going to go. The weather's kind of, is, eh, but we're going to do it because we need to do this. And so um, you get the uh, D-Day invasion. Uh, it is, uh, for anyone who's seen Saving Private Ryan, it was uh, brutal. And, uh, but we did establish uh, a beachhead and then we started bringing in troops and are fighting in France. And so we're sweeping down. In uh, August, I believe it is, uh, we're going to uh, move into to Paris. Uh, we let some of the free French troops go in uh, first. The free French, they were led by de Gaulle, who had been uh, a general in exile. Um, and uh, who's the other one? Uh, I can't remember the guy's name right now. Um, at any rate, so there's that going, and we're moving along. It takes a little while. It's a little slow going, but we're moving along, and things are going well. Then um, in December is the famous Battle of the Bulge. So this is essentially um, December 1944, Germany's in uh, dire straits. They're being put in the east by the Russians and the West by Americans and British. And so Hitler orders a final counterattack against the West. Uh, he's hoping if he can defeat the West, uh, then he can turn his full attention to the East against the Russians. He's not going to win either way. It doesn't matter. But he does his big attack, counterattack, the Battle of the Bulge. Um, their, their ideas were going to break through the Americans. stopped. You have a small group of Americans who are holding out until reinforcements can get there. It's difficult to get reinforcements because uh, it's the middle of winter. There's snow. It's a bitterly cold. Uh, but we do manage to do that and to uh, put back and, and – end that. So um, that means that now uh, we're moving in. Germany is essentially doomed uh, to, to, lo to lose, um, but you know they, they deserve it. They brought it on themselves. And um, so there's a question, who's going to go into Berlin? Well, Stalin says, I have earned it. We've done most of the fighting. We, the Soviets, have done most of the fighting, which was absolutely true. I know we tend to talk about uh, you know how much uh, how hard we fought, which we did, but we'll look at the numbers in a minute and you'll see. Um, at any rate, uh, there was also rumors that the Germans were going to try and fight back in, in, as guerrilla units in southern Germany. So uh, the decision was made that we will, the uh, U.S. troops will sweep down into the south uh, and um, pick off those these units of uh they called themselves the werewolves. They were supposed to be the werewolves, these guerrilla uh, groups that were going to attack. And in fact, that never really happened. They, they It was not just a pipe dream. Uh, and the Russians are given the honor and privilege of defeating the Germans in Berlin. Uh, well, that is quite 
some honor. They lost 100,000 people just in the, the two weeks. Um, so they move in. They're surrounding. They're coming in on uh, Berlin. Meanwhile, German people uh, and troops, uh, many of them are trying to surrender to the Americans. Because if you surrender to the Russians, that generally means uh, either death or concentration camps where you're gonna, it's going to be brutal conditions and you might not get released uh, when they are captured by British or American troops. Um, they're treated humanely, right? So, uh, you know, it's no, it's not luxury, but they're thrown, they're thrown into a prison, prisoner camp, but you know, they're given enough to eat and they're not beaten or tortured or, or tormented. So everyone's, <laughs> you know, ah, it's under the Americans. Um, so the, the Russians are closing in on Berlin. They start shelling Berlin on April 20th of 1945. Uh, they date because it's Hitler's birthday. And so, boom. And so then they move in. Brutal fighting. But they do, uh, they do capture Berlin. And it's indicative of how awful the fighting was, particularly on the Eastern Front, that Stalin... Uh, you know, the, the Germans were very, uh, to the bitter end, you had Germans who were, um, you had German SS who were hanging uh, and executing German men and boys who refused to fight or who fought, refused to fight. Um, they were fighting to the bitter end and uh, they were bringing in troops as young as 10 and 11 to fight, which, uh, you know, they certainly don't have any uh, fighting ability. And then you also have, um, Stalin, who, you know, the, the Germans, and we'll talk about that when we talk, get to the Holocaust, the Germans have treated the lands to the east so brutally that the Ger the Russians have been whipped up into a frenzy of revenge. And Stalin basically says once that once uh, they have Berlin, he goes, you got three days, do whatever you want. And it is an ugly, nasty, brutal three days. Um, we don't need to go into detail, but you get the idea. And um, so... In May of 1945, Germany finally surrenders. So I'm going to wrap it up there for today, except I want to give you this one statistic so we see the fighting. The United States in World War II, if you put up all of our numbers in, in Europe and in Japan, we lost 405,000 troops. That's significant. That's a lot of people. However, the Germans and the Axis, as Germans and their allies fighting it on just on the Eastern Front, we're not talking about against us, but on the Eastern Front, they lose 4 million troops, 4 million out of a smaller population. The Russians, the Soviets, Soviets, lose 9 million soldiers, adult. Right? So twice as many, more than twice as many as the Nazis, battle. On top of that, the Soviets lost 20 million civilians, 20 million. And those are people who are, that includes their Jewish populations who, of course, were killed in these Holocaust. That includes people who were killed uh, as revenge, as punishments. Um, it includes groups who were starved to death, people who um, were in, you know, civilians in combat areas who were killed. So uh, you look at that, 29 million Soviets died in the war. No wonder they call it the Great Patriotic War. Um, just a stunning number. So um, there we go. We're going to talk about the war in, against Japan next time, and then we'll be moving on to the Holocaust. So uh, there you go. We will soon.